Hi all, welcome back to Kindergarten and First Grade Math with Mr. Watan. I'm Mr. Watan and I'm one of the kindergarten teachers at Rising Star Elementary and we'll be working on some kindergarten and first grade math. Even though I say kindergarten and first grade, this video is welcome for everybody's viewing because if you want to work on this in second grade, that's great. If you are a family member, please join us and that way your kindergartner or first grader will have somebody to collaborate with or work with during this math time and they can be even smarter mathematicians when they're done with this video through this video we'll be doing four things we're going to play a math game it's dots and boxes again but i'm going to change it up it won't be a four by four like the last video it'll be a dots and boxes i'm going to call it with a twist and then we're going to do a read aloud a math read aloud, and then some math movement, and then some images to ponder. The mathematical practice has been the same for the past couple of days, so we're going to review this mathematical practice of make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. This mathematical practice is the first out of eight mathematical practices to help you develop your math brains to be even greater mathematicians. So what you will need for this video is what you've needed for the past few videos. You will need a writing utensil. I'm choosing a pen. You will also need something to write on. I'm choosing a post-it, just like the last two videos that we worked on together. Now, I'm gonna put this off to the side for now because I want to review one more time the mathematical practice. Make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Great. So. I have a problem right now. I want to start the game dots and boxes. So I'm going to persevere. I'm not going to give up in solving that problem. So I remember the first time we made this, um, we worked together on kindergarten and first grade math. We made an array. An array are rows of dots going horizontally and columns of dots going vertically as well. So we're going to start off by making a three by three array for the game dots and boxes. So I'm going to make three dots on top, three dots in the middle, and three dots in the bottom. That should make nine dots. So let's do that together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have nine dots to start our game, dots and boxes. Let's count that just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Great counting. Hey, I already solved my first problem. Make sense of my problem and persevere in solving them? Check. So I said that this is a game of dots and boxes, but with a twist. So the twist is here. I'm gonna pick some numbers to put in the middle of these spaces where we'll be making the boxes. So I'm gonna pick numbers that are smaller or less than five. So they're gonna be less than or smaller than five. So anything less than five. I know one is a number less than five. So I'm gonna put a one right there. And then I also know four is less than five. So I'm gonna put a four right there. And then I know two is also less than five. So I'm gonna put a two right there. And then three is also less than five. So I'm gonna put three right there. Okay, so. Just like the other games of dots and boxes, you're gonna need two players and look who's back. Have they moved? Honestly, I don't even know. I mean, they could have just been hanging out there the whole time. The whole time. Hi, Panda. Hi, Cheetah. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Just like last time, these two players will be playing dots and boxes. Now to remind everybody of how to play dots and boxes, we are going to take turns one, player at a time to make lines going vertically or lines going horizontally. And those lines are going to try to make boxes, but you can only make one line at a time. So when you close a box or make a square, which is the shape of this post-it right here, this is a square, you're trying to make a square or a box. When you make a, a square, you get a point. So your goal is to make as many points as you can. I have the old results from the last two games. The, la the first game, Panda won. One, two, three, Panda got three points. Cheetah, one point, but 
You know what Cheetah did? Cheetah made sense of problems and persevered in solving them and didn't give up because on day two, Cheetah got more points than Panda. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six points. One, two, three. This kid. This kid came back. So we're going to play dots and boxes. Now this is with a twist because there are numbers in the middle of these dots. And the trick is you don't just get one point anymore, you get multiple points. So the rules for making the lines are the same as before. However, you get different points for whichever you close the box on. So let's get going and let's play this game. So I think that the last time Cheetah was pink, and Panda was blue. So I'm going to put these pens right in front of them down here. And the last time, the first time I remember Cheetah went first and we're alternating. So Panda went first last time. This time Cheetah can go first. So Cheetah's going to go first and Cheetah's going to take the red, I mean the pink pen, and they're going to make the first line. Now they have to make a horizontal or a vertical line. And Cheetah's going to choose to make this vertical line right there. Vertical line. Fixed it vertical line right there to start off. And then Panda's going to take a turn, make a horizontal line. I think horizontal line's going to go up here, right, Panda? Yup, right there. And then Sheeta going to make another line. They're really solving their problem and persevering. Way to make sense of your those mathematical practices. So Cheetah went, Panda's going next, make another line. So their goal or there, um, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make a square or a box. So I don't see any boxes yet, so I'm not gonna, they're, neither of them are getting points yet. Hmm, what if I make a line right here? No box yet, no squares yet. Panda's turn, right there. Not quite, not quite a square yet, Cheetah's turn. Let's see, Cheetah, where are you gonna go? Cheetah, what if you make this line right there? Ooh, I think Panda's gonna make a move. Panda is making sense of the problem and persevering and solving it. Boom. Panda. Panda got three points. So instead of getting one point, the number that they wrote inside, that's how many points they got. Now let's see if they're gonna get more points. Cheetah, it's your turn. Cheetah is gonna make, ooh. Cheetah. Boom. Panda got three points. Cheetah got four. Yeah. And then Panda's turn's gonna keep going. There. And then Cheetah's gonna, oh. So if Cheetah is trying to get as many points as possible, he's gonna make sense of the problem and persevere in solving them. He has two places to close a box, here or here. Should he close it on the one or the two to get more points? Hmm. Good choice. That's definitely the better choice because now you can have more points. So Cheetah has four points and two points. Panda, don't worry, kid. You got that one point. Boom. And now, look, ah, after we add this up, we see that this dots and boxes game is with a twist because it is adding differently. Instead of saying Cheetah got two points and Panda got two points, Cheetah got four and two. Four and two. Four and two. Let's count that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, Cheetah got six. I'm going to write six right here for Cheetah to remember that he got six points. Panda, let's count how many you have. Panda, you have one and three. Hmm. One, and three. Let's count that. One, two, three, four. Panda, you got four points. Well done, Panda. So Panda, ooh, I wrote that in Cheetah's pen. Here we go. Cheetah got six, Panda got four. Good try, kid. You definitely persevered. You tried and you didn't give up. So I really commend, uh, I really commend you for that. Cheetah, well done. Victor yet again. Winner. Well done. Okay, so that's how you play a game of dots and boxes. And just like last time, you don't have to use a three by three array. You can make a four by four array rather than a three by three array. That way you can add up different numbers. You can add up many different numbers. 
Okay, for now, we're going to say, see you later, these two. See you later. And we're going to move on now to the math read aloud. And just like last time in the past few videos, we are going to use the read aloud from Tumble Books. And the way to get to Tumble Books is you're going to get onto the district website, seattleschools.org, scroll to the students. And just like last time, it's the fifth item down when you scroll over students down there. Some screens may show this smaller. However, just count five down. One, two, three, four, five. On the fifth one, it should say online academic resources. I'm going to click on that. And then I will continue to scroll down and click on tumble books. Now, the book that we are going to read today is also a math book. It's a counting book. It has something to do with ducks. So I'm going to click on the word tumble search here. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to search by the title. I remember it had something to do with ducks. Oh, one duck stuck. That was it. It was one duck stuck. So I'm going to click go and scroll down a bit. And here's the book. One duck stuck. One duck stuck. That's the book that we'll be using for the read aloud today. Now I'm going to move this right down here so we can see the story. One duck. I wonder what will happen with this duck. Down by the marsh, by the sleepy, slimy marsh, one duck gets stuck in the muck. Down by the deep green Stuck. Oh no. Let's go back to that mathematical practice. Make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. I wonder if this duck's going to persevere in solving their problems. One duck stuck. Help! Help! Who can help? Let's see. One. Hey, we we can. Two fish. Tails going swish swish. Swim to the duck. Splish splish. No luck. The duck stays stuck, deep in the muck, down by the squishy fishy marsh. Oh no. This duck still has a problem, but I bet they're going to persevere in solving that problem and they're not going to give up. So we had one duck and then we had two fish helping. I wonder how many animals or creatures will come next. Who comes after two if I put one more? Hmm. Making a prediction here. Let's see if there are going to be three things next. Help, help. Who can help? We can, we can, three moose munching on spruce. Plod to the duck, clomp, clomp, no luck. The duck stays stuck, deep in the muck, down by the swampy, chompy marsh. Help, help, who can help? Three moose can help, but the duck is not giving up. They're persevering. Three. And then maybe four creatures will come next. We can, we can, four crickets chirping in the thickets. Leap to the duck. Beep, bleep. No luck. The duck stays stuck deep in the muck down by the pricky sticky marsh. Oh my goodness. This duck is stuck. And they are not giving up. They're persevering and solving their problem. Help, help, who can help? Hmm, who can help? We can. And five frogs hopping on logs jump to the duck. Plop, plop. No luck. The duck stays stuck deep in the muck down by the creaky, croaky marsh. Oh my goodness, one duck was stuck. Two creatures couldn't help. Three creatures couldn't help. Four creatures couldn't help either. Now, there are five, five frogs couldn't help. The duck is still stuck, five. 
If there are five creatures in this one, the next screen should have one, two, three, four, five, six, six creatures. Let's see. Help. Help. Who can help? Hmm. We can. We can. Six skunks climbing over trunks crawl to the duck. Plunk, plunk. No luck. The duck stays stuck deep in the muck down by the soggy, loggy marsh. Help, help. Who can help? Six. And then one more. Seven. We can seven snails making slippery trails slide to the duck. Slush, slush, no luck. The duck stay stuck deep in the muck down by the slippy, slopey marsh. Help, help, who can help? Hmm, who can help? We can. We can. Eight possums nibbling and blossoms crawl to the duck slosh slosh. No luck. The duck stays stuck deep in the muck down by the reedy weedy marsh. Help, help. Who can help? We can, we can. Nine snakes leaving little wakes slither to the duck. Slink, slink, no luck. The duck stays stuck deep in the muck down by the messy, mossy marsh. All right, hold up now. One creature can do it. Five creatures can do it. Six, seven, eight, nine. Nine creatures can't do it. Nine creatures can't help the duck. This duck... We, let's go back to this mathematical practice right there. Make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. Yeah. This duck is definitely persevering. They're definitely not giving up. Help, help. Who can help? We can. We can. Ten dragonflies zooming through the skies. Whir to the duck. Zing, zing, no luck. The duck stays stuck deep in the muck down by the muggy, buggy marsh. Oh, goodness. Is this duck ever going to get out of the marsh? Help, help. Who can help? We can. We can. Hey, 10 creatures couldn't help. What if all the creatures helped? We can, we can. Slish, plump, bleep, plop, plunk, slush, slosh, slink, zing. Is this duck person? They all helped the duck who got stuck in the muck. <gasps> Persevere, little duck. Persevere, keep going. Don't give up. You got it. Spluck. The duck got it. Way to go, duck. Said the duck, who got out of the muck, deep by the deep green marsh. Hey, this duck definitely persevered. Bye, duck. Hey, moose. Hi. Hi. The end. So, this duck, I don't know if I even talked to this duck about this mathematical practice, but hey, this duck got it. Make sense of problems and persevere in solving them. While they seem to have solved the problem by working all together to help the duck get unstuck. And the duck persevered and didn't give up. Maybe this mathematical practice works outside of math too. Or maybe that was math. Ooh. So we're done with the math read aloud. We're moving on to the math movement. And we're moving now. And I feel like getting up. So I'm going to push this chair back. And then push this camera up so you can see. And today let's do, let's start with five hops. Ready? 
five hops. One, two, three, four, five. That's five. And then six. Let's do six. Ooh, let's turn around six times. Can we do that? One, two, three. I'm going to turn around the other way. Four, five, six. Ooh, six turns. You're a dizzy, that's okay, let's sit down. You know what, I'm gonna sit down. I'm feeling a little dizzy, so I'm gonna move that camera back down in the chair back. And let's do one more movement. The one more movement is, let's do five claps. So only we already, let's do more than five. Let's do 10, let's do 10 silent claps. This is how you do a silent clap. You just touch without making the sound. Let's do 10 silent claps. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Thanks for the movement. The last movement I'm going to teach you isn't really a movement. Now, I told you in the first video that I'm from the Philippines and I was born there. So I remember saying goodbye to you in the, in the Filipino, or one of the Filipino languages, Tagalog, and it was Paalam, but we're not saying Paalam yet. We're going to count in Tagalog. Are you ready for this? It goes like this. So we know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's count in Tagalog. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, anim, pito, walo, siyam, sampo. Let's try that again. Isa, dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, anim, pito, walo, siyam, sampo. Thank you for counting in the language that I grew up with. Now we're done with the math movement. We're going to move on to the images to ponder. We pondered about this image last time and we remembered that we made two, 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 two. And then there was one more left over down here. Just that one. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hmm, that's the image from last time. Let's ponder over a new image. <gasps> there it is. Wait, I see an image really quickly, really clearly. I see three and three. I know three and three. That's six because I know that three and three here, six. Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six. Six. I want to make sure that three and three is six. Here we go. Let's see. Three and three. But that's not six, though. There's one more. Three and three. One more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's seven. So that must be seven. Now, if I don't want to count it by threes. Maybe I can count it by twos. Let me fix this circle up so we can count by twos. Two. Ooh, Mr. Matan, don't move the dots. Move the circle. Two, four, six, still six, seven. You know what? I know for sure that that's a six because you know when I see a three and a three, I know that's a six for sure. So six and then one more. Seven. What are some other ways that you can ponder about this image? Hmm. All right, well, last image. Oh my gosh. My goodness. That is an image. Okay, but I see something that I really see. I see something very familiar. To me, this looks like five. And that looks like the opposite on the top right here. This looks like another five. Let me copy this circle. Hold up. Five and five. Wait, I know. Five and five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Easy. Ten. It's ten. Should I just count it just to make sure? Okay, let's count by ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm, I'm happy with that. However, 
I wonder what you ponder over this image. What do you notice? Okay, well, thank you for spending time with me, Mr. Watan, in doing kindergarten and first grade math. Now, I'm again, Mr. Watan, and I am one of the kindergarten teachers at Rising Star Elementary, and maybe I'll see you again in the near future. Who knows, well, maybe I'll see you out in the community. Either way, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And let's see, we said goodbye in Tagalog in the first video, in Mandarin in the next video. When I lived in California, I learned a little bit of Spanish. And I know that to say goodbye in Spanish, you say adios. So we're going to say goodbye. Adios.